Hello and welcome to another episode of Linux for News. In today's episode, we're going to talk about desktop environments. Because choosing the distribution isn't the only important choice you're going to make as a new Linux user, choosing the desktop environment that's right for you is also a very important choice. And sometimes it's very overwhelming to new users that we have so many desktop environments. That makes the decision of which one to go with and which distribution to go with all that much harder. But in this video, I'm going to show you guys all of the popular desktop environments, give you a general overview, and then that might help you make the decision as far as which one caters more for your use case. And then once you make a decision, it'll be that much easier to choose a distribution to go along with, which is actually going to be the subject of the next video. But in today's video, it's all about desktop environments. So what I'm going to do is go through all of the popular desktop environments, that way you guys get a general idea of what sets one apart from another. And then it also helps you make a decision as far as which one you prefer, which one might fit your use case better. And I'm not going to go too in depth into any one desktop environment. This isn't a tutorial video, but I think it's a very important thing that you see the desktop environments that are available that'll help you make your choice as far as which one to go with. In the next video, I'm going to give you an overview of the more popular Linux distributions that are available. And armed with the knowledge that you're going to get in this video, as well as the next, that'll help you make a decision as far as which distribution to go along with on your laptop or desktop. Before we get started, there's a few things I'd like to tell you about my channel, and then we'll get right into it. Thank you for checking out Learn Linux TV, your source for Linux-related fun and learning. And I just love making this content for you guys, but producing it isn't cheap. If you enjoy my content, please consider supporting my channel. And you can do so by visiting support.learnlinux.tv, where you can check out the official shop, become a patron, and find other ways to help. And among the perks for becoming a patron, you'll get access to select videos before the rest of the world. But even if you're not able to donate right now, no problem. You can support this channel simply by sharing this video with your colleagues, or even simply clicking the like button, which lets YouTube know that you want to see more awesome Linux content just like this. And if you're looking for something to read, well, I write books, and you can check out my books at learnlinux.tv books. If you want to suggest a topic for a future video, send your ideas to suggest at learnlinux.tv, or if you notice that something is broken or not working right, then you can let me know by sending an email to fsck at learnlinux.tv. And finally, I'd like to mention the sponsor for today's video. Linode has been doing cloud computing since 2003, which is actually before Amazon Web Services was even a thing. On Linode's platform, you can get your server up and running in minutes. And they include all of the popular distributions, such as CentOS, Debian, Ubuntu, Fedora, and get this, also Arch Linux. And let's be honest, what could be better than a Linux cloud server provider that allows you to tell all of your friends, I run Arch? Linode has multiple server plans available to make any app scalable and flexible. You can use it to host a blog, set up a VPN server, a Minecraft server, or you could do what I did and set up a website for your YouTube channel because the official website for Learn Linux TV runs on Linode. And Linode offers 24 by 7, 365 support, regardless of plan size, so you can get live help from a real person when you need it. New users can get started right now with $100 in credit towards a new account. And I highly recommend you check them out because Linode is awesome. And with that out of the way, let's get right into today's video. All right, so here I am with the GNOME desktop. I'm actually running Fedora, but Fedora provides a very vanilla, meaning unchanged GNOME experience. So what you are seeing right now is GNOME pretty much as the developers intended. The thing is though, the developers and designers of the GNOME desktop have declared that it should be pronounced GNOME. And there's actually a good reason for that that I won't get into, but I just have a habit of calling it GNOME with a silent G, which is technically the proper English way to pronounce it, but I just wanted to let you guys know 
that the GNOME desktop is actually supposed to be pronounced GNOME, so if you hear someone pronouncing it that way, you won't be surprised. But anyway, enough about that. The GNOME desktop is a very divisive desktop. Some people really love it, including myself. It's my favorite desktop environment on Linux. It's what I use on all of my computers. But other people, they don't like it so much because this is not a traditional desktop environment. It's actually quite unique in how you use it. On your screen right now, you are seeing the default GNOME desktop. And it looks kind of empty, doesn't it? There's no icons anywhere on the desktop at all. And we have this black panel up here at the top. And that's about it. And the reason for that is because the GNOME desktop wants to stay out of the way and actually put all of the focus on the applications that you're running. If you click on Activities, for example, and you can get to the same screen by simply pressing the Super, aka Windows key on your keyboard, we have a panel here on the left that's not normally visible. And what you are seeing here is a combination of favorite applications, and then it also shows the applications that are running as well. For example, the file manager, we have a little dot underneath it, and that's how you know that an application is actually running. So for example, if I was to click on photos, I don't have any photos, but you'll get the idea. And then I go back here to activities, we have the dot right here. But I've mentioned that the files application is running, but you don't see it on the screen. And the reason for that is because I have it on a different workspace. GNOME is highly workspace centric. In fact, it has what's called dynamic workspaces. Workspaces are essentially having separate desktops. And as you can see here, I can click on each one of these three. This one, I have several applications running here. And then I have photos, which I've just opened. And then I have this empty desktop here. And what I mean by dynamic workspaces is that it always makes sure that you have an empty workspace to use at all times. Most desktop environments with Linux actually have you set a preset number of workspaces that you want. But GNOME just basically adds or removes desktops as needed as you open and close applications. So for example, if I open up Firefox, and then I go back to Activities, you can see that a fourth desktop has been added that is empty. And then what I could do is switch to that one and open GNOME Software, for example. And now I have another empty desktop. If I close one of these applications, for example, I'll just get rid of this one. You can see that one of the desktops went away, so now you could probably see what I mean by dynamic workspaces. And it also features great keyboard shortcuts as well. So for example, if I hold down Super and then I press Page Up, I go up one desktop. And then similarly, if I hold Super and press the Page Down key, I go down a desktop. Up here on the top right corner, we have our system controls, for example, our volume, brightness, the Wi-Fi network that we're connected to, the ability to add Bluetooth devices to the system. We see more information about our battery right here. And then we also have quick access to settings. And as you can see, it's a very straightforward desktop. The downside to GNOME is that you don't have much in the way of customization. Yes, you can customize it quite a bit. You can even use extensions, although I generally don't because I find that extensions can sometimes make the GNOME desktop a bit unstable though a few extensions won't hurt anyone. I generally stay away from them because for me, the GNOME desktop works fine for me as is with no changes. GNOME is basically for those of you out there that want a default desktop environment. And when I say default, GNOME is essentially the default Linux desktop environment. It's installed on many distributions. But to be fair, default in Linux only means it's a suggestion. You can install whatever desktop environment you want but it's as close to a standard in Linux as we currently have. If you want more customization than GNOME provides, then other desktop environments, which we'll be getting to shortly, will give you a greater level of customization than GNOME does, so choose accordingly. So if you don't really care about customization as much and you just want something simple to get you going, then GNOME is great for you, but if you actually have a focus on customization, then you might want to look at one of the other desktops that we'll be getting to shortly. Overall though, GNOME is a great desktop. It's not your typical desktop. As you can see, the interface is quite unique. So it's not for everyone, but I do recommend that you at least give it a shot. Anyway, let's go ahead and check out another desktop environment.
So here I am with the Plasma desktop, which I sometimes refer to as KDE, which is essentially its old name. It's a long story. Old habits die hard, so I will use KDE and Plasma interchangeably, and actually a lot of other people do too, because for those of us that have been using Linux for a long time like me, shedding the old name from our memory is kind of hard to do. The Plasma desktop overall is highly customizable, and it runs very fast. It's a good choice for medium tier computers and even the lower tier computers out there, because it's just very responsive and it runs efficiently. And the layout is similar to Windows in the sense that you have a start menu equivalent here on the bottom left hand side of the screen. And then on the right hand side, you have status bar icons right here that give you the status of various apps that are running in the background. Now on my end, you might notice some inconsistency when it comes to the icon sizes on the screen right now because I had to make some adjustments for the screen recorder to work with this desktop environment on a 4K screen. Probably not something that you'll run into, but if anything looks hard to see, that's probably why. So anyway, what I'm going to do is launch the file manager here. The file manager in Plasma is referred to as Dolphin. Interesting name, but it is a great file manager. It gives you all of the options that you would expect to have in a file manager. For example, I can activate other view modes here, as you can see to customize how things are presented in the window. As you can see here, I have Firefox, and Firefox is not a native Plasma application, but it does look fine. Even if an application is not designed for the Plasma desktop, Plasma still has a way that makes non-native applications look right at home. And just like a majority of the desktop environments out there, I can minimize the window, and you can see that it minimizes into the application icon down here at the bottom. And then I can launch new applications by going here to my favorites list. Or I could go here to the applications tab to launch any application that I might have installed on my system. I could basically just browse through the various categories here. And you can see that the desktop environment is very easy to use. And in my opinion, the Plasma desktop has more customization options than any other desktop environment that you can possibly download. I'm not going to be able to show you all of the ways that you can customize it here, but as a quick example, if I right click the panel here, I can edit the panel, I could change the height, and so far, nothing out of the ordinary here because you can adjust that in most of the desktop environments. But when it comes to options, we just have a bunch. As you can see here, I could customize how the panel is displayed, and I can also add new widgets to the panel as well, and even the screen. I can add an analog clock here, application dashboard. I can even add an application launcher to the desktop, which is kind of crazy, but you can do it. And the widgets that you can add will either work better on the panel or on the desktop, and some of them work well on both. But Plasma doesn't hold your hand at all, and if you want to put something on the desktop that's actually meant for the panel, well, they won't stop you. They'll let you do whatever you want. And an example of that is I have this Bluetooth icon right here. I could drag this right onto the panel. And here it is on the panel. So now I have something to click on if I want a dedicated place to add or join new Bluetooth devices to my system. As you can see here, I can easily add a new device. But similar to that, I can add that same Bluetooth icon here to the desktop. And like this application launcher app right here, it's kind of weird to have it on the desktop, but again, you can. If you decide to check out the Plasma desktop on your distribution of choice, I highly recommend you just browse around the settings and see what you can do with the customization. If you can think it, chances are you could probably do it. So now I am logged into the XFCE desktop environment which is actually one of my favorites when it comes to the more lighter weight desktop environments that you would use on older computers. But then again, lightweight desktop environments work especially well on newer computers with faster hardware and faster processors as well. And XFCE has been around for a very long time. Although XFCE is a traditional desktop environment, 
Basically, it has panels, a minimize button, and so on. The defaults of the desktop put the panel on the top of the screen rather than on the bottom. So for example, we have the application launcher right here. And then if I open up the file manager, for example, you'll notice that there's an icon here for the file manager because basically when you open applications, you have a tile here on the top for that application, which is very similar to the older style of the Windows taskbar from back in the day before Windows switched to the icon only view but it's at the top of the screen. Just like most desktop environments, we have multiple workspaces. One of my favorite features, we have a system tray here on the right. But when it comes to the layout in XFCE, the default layout is just a suggestion. You don't actually have to have this panel here at the top, and you don't even have to have a panel here at the bottom. Now essentially, this panel at the bottom is just a place to put some icons for applications that you use frequently. But again, it's just a suggestion. So for example, I can actually go here to the panel menu. I can go to panel preferences. I could change it to a vertical panel, for example. I get all kinds of options. And if I unlock it, I can just drag it over here to the left-hand side if I want it to be over there instead. Basically, I can customize the panels any way I'd like. And similarly, I can select panel one, the top panel, I can unlock that as well, and I could just drag it all the way down here to the bottom. And now I have the panel in the traditional place at the bottom of the screen. I could even configure a panel on each side of the screen, all the way around the edges of the screen if I wanted to. There's a lot of customization that you can do here, but aside from all the customization that you get, it's a full feature desktop environment. It's very fast, and I like it a lot. We have all of the things that we would expect to have in a traditional desktop environment, such as system tray icons. And I've already mentioned the tiles here for the running applications. We have a full application menu with categories that we can go through to look at all of the applications that are on the system. So it's very easy to use. And if you are looking for a desktop environment that runs well on older and newer computers alike, then I highly recommend you give XFCE a try. Here on your screen right now is the Cinnamon desktop environment running on Fedora. If you've ever used the Cinnamon edition of Mint, you'll notice that this looks actually quite different. There's different branding here, but it's essentially the same desktop. The Cinnamon desktop environment is made specifically for Linux Mint. That's what made it famous, and those are the majority of the developers that work on it. But just like with all things Linux, even if something is designated for a particular platform, there's nothing stopping us from actually grabbing that and installing it wherever we'd like. And Fedora makes Cinnamon available to their users, just like Debian does, and a few other distributions as well. So you don't actually have to run Linux Mint in order to enjoy Cinnamon. But given that it's made specifically for Mint, you'll probably have the best experience on Linux Mint. But again, you can install it on whatever distribution you'd like, and here it is on Fedora. Cinnamon is basically a traditional desktop environment. The application launcher is located on the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. And we get various categories, just like with most application launchers nowadays, where you can basically go through and select a category by just hovering over it. And then once you've selected the category, you just go over here and launch the application that you're looking for. So, you know, here's Firefox. And down here at the bottom, we can see that we have the application icon right here. And if I launch another application, we can see that it opens up in place. We don't get a new icon. Just like with Windows, the application launcher icons down here on the panel double as the actual tiles for open applications as well. And then by hovering your mouse cursor over a running application, you can see a little preview window here that gives you an idea of what's actually on that application. On the right-hand side, we have all the usual controls, for example, Wi-Fi, battery, and other applications that are running in the background. So traditionally, Cinnamon is very easy to use and probably a great choice for someone that has a mid-tier computer and is looking for a more hand-holding experience or an easier-to-use interface. Although, 
I have seen many professional Linux users use the Cinnamon desktop environment as well. So it aims to be a great desktop environment for, well, virtually everyone. So definitely give Cinnamon a try. There's a number of distributions that actually offer this. For example, Linux Mint, that's the distro that's made it famous, but also here on Fedora, as well as Debian and some others as well. If what you see on the screen right now is appealing to you, then this is definitely worth a look. So there you go. That was an overview of the more common and popular desktop environments available for Linux. Let me know in the comments below which one your favorite is, and then stay tuned and subscribe if you haven't already done so, because once you do, you will get a notification as soon as the next episode is available in this series, if it isn't already. And then once that's uploaded, I'll see you there. Thanks for watching.